No, it's not. So, is there? Can he adjust it back there?
Good morning, everybody. Come on in and have a seat. Grab somebody you love and sit next to them. Grab somebody you like, sit next to them. Hello, my name's Nate, and on behalf of our church family, I'd like to extend a special welcome to everybody that comes on a regular basis and everybody that hasn't come before. Hello. Today's a great day. Um, don't forget about the kids' dollar days things, the fundraiser collection plate today. Fire starter meeting tonight at 6.30 p.m. in the fellowship hall. <laughs> Women's Bible study Thursday, May 23rd at 6 p.m. And Sunday, May 26th, we're going to have a Memorial Day picnic <laughs> after the morning service at Monroe Township Park. The sign-up sheet is in the foyer. Maybe I'll be able to find it this time. I won't be late. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you for everybody for coming. Let's get ready to worship God. Let's get ready to be one with him. And here's Susan. Thank you. Okay, can everybody stand and join the reading of the word? And we're in Philippians 2.2, 2, speaking of unity. Okay. <laughs> Make a joy complete by being by the same mind, maintaining the same love, united in spirit, intent on one purpose. Thank you, Suzanne. Praise God. We have a special announcement today about a baby that was born. And we do have a couple pictures, I believe, up there. Here's another one. This is a message that Todd sent me. He said, our cute granddaughter, Nyla, was born this morning. Both mother and child are happy and healthy. So praise God for that. Amen. He wanted me to thank you. He wanted me to thank you for your prayers. You know the challenge they had at one point with the pregnancy and everything. So he said, please let everybody know we appreciate their prayers. So God is so good. Can you say amen? amen. We're going to take up the offering during worship. We're going to pray for that right now. Dear Father, we thank you again for the opportunity to give. Thank you for the gift that you put in our spirit so that we, Lord, are able to give freely. Bless this offering. May it be used to further your kingdom and the work here at Brookside Ministries. In the name of Jesus, we give you thanks and praise. Now we're going to invite the Spirit. Let me just say something about that. When we invite the Holy Spirit, anything can happen. When we invite the Holy Spirit, anything can happen. I'll try one more time. When we invite the Holy Spirit, anything can happen. One of the gifts, one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit, and both words are in the plural in the original, in the original language, gifts of healings. During worship, during the service, at any time, if you need a gift of healing, he can give it to you and heal your body. Amen. Sometimes it's heat that we feel in that particular area where we need healing. Other times it's shaking. It's sometimes it's just a quickening. But be open. Let him work. Receive. Can you say amen? amen? Too often we don't receive. We do a lot of praying, but we don't receive. And he wants us to learn how to receive in Jesus' name. Let's invite him now. Dear Spirit of God. Come upon us Come on. with your healing power. Amen. Touch our lives. Touch us. Encourage us. Encourage us. Challenge, us. Challenge us. Help us to worship today. In Jesus' name, we welcome you. We welcome you. Hallelujah. We welcome you. Glory be to God. We welcome you in this place. We welcome you right now. Have your way. Touch 
from the fire You saved me from the flame You 
pull me out of the grave. Oh God, you are good. Oh, 
will never
say amen that song by the way we've been missing something today we've been missing the ladies can you say amen they do make a great difference don't they when they're here with us most of them are great worshipers and they help us to worship and so I praise God for them they've been away at a ladies retreat they're coming back this afternoon and God's been working there in the retreat I know in a special way so I thank God for that we do have some prayer concerns. Pray for Robin. She and her family are going through a time of bereavement with the loss of her brother. Lee was doing pretty well, but then he had a little setback. Let's believe God to heal him completely and fully. Bobby, we still pray for him and ask God to set him free and to deliver him. We need to pray for our country. Can you say amen? amen. I know every week we do that, but we're going to continue. We need to pray for Israel as well. And let's pray for the ladies when they return today that God will protect them in every way while they're on the road. And I think they have a service this morning. Let's pray that that will be the grand finale for them in a good sense. And then we need to pray for He Covers Me June 1st in Milton. We want to pray for the kids' summer kickoff in June. Let's pray for the Jesus March in Sunbury. We still are waiting for a date. And what about fire starters tonight? We need to pray for Rick. Can you say amen? amen? Because God's using this, fire starters, to equip people, and that's what it's all about here in a good church. Can you say amen? We need to be equipped for the glory of God. Will you stand and we'll pray, and then we'll introduce our special speaker this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for the way that you've touched our hearts today. Thank you for the worship team as they've been used of you. I pray for Robin and the family that you will just help them through this time. Lord, this time of bereavement, minister in Jesus' name. Heal me completely, Lord. Restore him completely. We're believing you to do it in Jesus' name. The same with Bobby. Lord, heal him inside. Heal his damaged emotions in Jesus' name. And I pray for everybody that's present today that needs healing, that you would heal by your power and by your grace and by that anointing that breaks every yoke. I pray, Lord, for the ladies as they have their final service, I believe, this morning. And Lord, just pour out upon them in a special way. Give them traveling mercies back in Jesus' name. We pray, Father, for he covers me, that the people in Milton will be blessed to participate. Lord, in Jesus' name, may souls be saved, may lives be changed and transformed. Kids' summer kickoff, Lord, bless that. Like you did last year, you did a, a tremendous job last year. I pray for your anointing to rest upon it, and children will be saved, but their parents would be touched and saved as well. Father, we're looking forward to the march in Sunbury. And then in the park, when you will pour out your spirit upon people, just move. May souls be saved, lives be changed and transformed in Jesus' name. Fire started tonight. Bless it. Bless it, Lord. Let that anointing that breaks every yoke rest upon it in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Well, we have a special speaker this morning. Amen. Pastor Rich. So special. God puts a word on his heart and he shares it so faithfully with us. And today he's got a word God's placed down deep inside. Get ready, get ready. It's a word for you. Amen. God bless. Amen. Johnny, don't go anywhere. 
Come over here. Sorry, dude. But somebody had a birthday yesterday? <laughs> all right, now. All right, so I do this thing. I call it the Pentecostal birthday song. So I need you, I'm going to sing, so you might want to turn my mic off. But uh, I need you guys to play along, all right? So can you guys clap like this? A happy birthday to you, a happy birthday to you. May you feel Jesus cheer every day of the year. Happy birthday to you, a happy birthday to you, and the best one that you've ever had. Amen. Sorry, bro. Your dad put me up to it. <laughs> Good morning, Brookside. Boy, I, I didn't realize how many ladies went on the retreat, but that's awesome, you know, because retreats are, are cool, are cool. Can you put up the first slide? And that's a mistake. See, I, I want to tell you when I make a mistake, I'm willing to admit it. And God told me this morning, he says, the title of your sermon is It Takes Two? And he said, no, that's not how it works. It takes four, right? It takes four. It takes us, and it takes the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So when I make a mistake, I'm going to admit it. And, you know, I don't have a computer here, so I couldn't fix it. So I fixed it on here. I crossed out the two and put four. <laughs> but, so, <laughs> but that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about um, our life with God through the eyes of King David. Okay, so let's pray. Father God, we love you so much, and we praise you, and we thank you, Lord. Thank you for your son, Jesus. Thank you for your Holy Spirit, and we thank you for your word. Lord, today as we dig into Psalm 139 and what David wrote from his heart, Lord, I pray that it would change our hearts, Lord, that we would experience you closer today. That is our goal here at Brookside, that we would be closer to you every day and continue to grow in our faith, Lord. So I just pray that um, the words we speak today and what we read and what we hear, Lord, would draw us closer to that relationship, that it does take forward, Lord, you, your son, and your Holy Spirit. We thank you for your presence here now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, kind of spilled the beans there. But we're going to take a look at Psalm 139 today. And um, it's King David's relationship with God. And it's like 34 verses. So we can't go through the whole thing. But I'm just going to paraphrase and we're going to go through. And it, to me, when... when, when I read it and I, and God started revealing to me like, yeah, you know, this was written so many years ago, but it, it's like relevant today. It's so relevant. And, you know, we got to praise David for his openness and his willingness to just be so transparent when he wrote these Psalms. And so I want to just start with um, Psalm 139 verses one through two. And it says, oh Lord, you've examined my heart. And you know everything about me. You know when I sit down and when I stand up. Now, when I was studying, when I was looking into it, you know, David was kind of just saying, boy, you're even here for the mundane parts of my life. You know, I mean, and that's what, he, what Dave, David was, was saying. He's like, wow, you know, you're just here all the time. You know, not just... For the glory ride, or, or, you know, you're here for the middle part, the sad part, all of it. He's not, God's not just like a part-time person, you know, like God is there, Jesus is with us, the Holy Spirit travels with us, even when we're doing the wash, you know, or raking the leaves or cutting the grass. He, he's, with, he's, he's with us all the time. You know my thoughts, even when I'm far away. You know, David was perplexed with this. Give me, can you give me the next time? Ooh, I did that wrong. Okay. Yeah, that's the one I want. See, you know better than I know. <laughs> you know, David couldn't believe that even when he wasn't feeling like 
that close to God, God was there. You know, he had his periscope up and he's checking it out and he's staying there and, and he's ready. Even, you know, when you're, do, when you're doing, doing things that, aren't, that we don't think are, are that important. But God is with us every step of the way. He's just on the lookout all the time looking for us. Are there times in your life when you put God on the sideline, right? You, you know what I mean? We're like, okay, I'm all on fire for God today. I, I'm ready to go. But then life happens. You have hobbies, you know, like riding your Harley, racing your Harley. Okay, maybe, maybe your hobby is work. You know, how many people, we get so wrapped up in our work, but are you thinking about God when you're at work? God's thinking about you. <laughs> you're playing sports, you know, you're, you're, you're doing sports, you know, my athletic build, I'm always, or how about kids sports, <laughs> right? We all do it. I mean, let's face it. I mean, if we were all sold out for God 24-7, 365, first of all, this place would be packed and it would be overflowed, right? And revival would just be flowing and flowing and flowing and flowing. You know, we've been talking about the Holy Spirit and revival, and that, that's kind of where I want to go with this today is that revival starts here, you know, and it's contagious. And I don't want to go down a rabbit hole, but we can, we can talk about revival all we want, but revival is an action word. <laughs> you know, we, we've got to let Jesus rule, rule and put the distractions aside. But even when we're doing it, God's just up there. He is so patient, so understanding. He's just got his periscope saying, hey, come on back. I'm here, bro. I'm here, sister. I love you anyway. You know, they called Jesus Emmanuel, God with us, right? So we can put him, we can try to put him away. We can try to put God to the side, but he's with us anyway. And you know what the great part is? He doesn't care. He's ready. He's forgiving. He's a loving God. He just loves us so much. If we look at verses 7 and 8, it says, I can never escape your spirit. I can never get away from your presence. How about that? How about that? You know, we can run, but we can't hide. God is always there. He's always there. He wants to be a part of everything we do. If I go up to heaven, you are there, David says. If I go down to the grave, you are there. David was, wasn't really talking about the grave. He was talking about you know, like when I'm sleeping, when I'm awake, when I'm sleeping. You're always there. The Holy Spirit goes with us. Always. We can ignore, we can ignore him. But he's there. And that's what makes God so awesome is that he gave us free will we don't have a God that says you have to do this now every day at noon you have to look a certain direction or you have to do this or you have to do that God get, has given us the freedom to draw close or to go far away and we pay a price when we go away <laughs> always <laughs> we, we could talk about that probably we could give testimonies and be here till midnight on Thursday. But when we're, when we're close, his presence, he's always ready to guide us on the path. And on Wednesdays, we hear testimonies about the awesome things that God has done. And sometimes that's right after a day when you were having a bad day and you weren't that close to God. But you get up the next morning, you just draw back in. He's just standing there waiting for you. He's always waiting for you. That's, some people, I, I can't even imagine that God loves us so much and it's so unconditional that we, we can do things 
that would hurt his feelings. And he loves us anyway. He cares about us anyway. How many people here have ever had their feelings hurt? <laughs> right. And, you know, Rachel was talking last week about forgiveness, right? How many people have ever held a grudge? <laughs> yeah. Jesus doesn't hold a grudge. He doesn't. He just loves you no matter what. No matter what. He's there for us. He cares. He forgives us. He doesn't remember yesterday. He's just looking for your future. That's why we love Emmanuel. God with us. Psalm 139. 13 and 14. You made us. You made all the delicate and inner parts of our body and knit me together in my mother's womb. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous. How well I know it. You know, if you've ever had suffered from low self-esteem, this is your verse. This is your verse. I mean, you know, look at the ride that David has taken us on. But this is so important for our lives. He knit us together. We are perfect. We are perfect. We are perfect in God's eyes. Maybe not in society's eyes, right? But, you know, you know, the people that are trying to make us look a certain way, wear a certain sneaker, you know, or, or ride a certain motorcycle, there's always a motive behind that, isn't there? Right? It's money. It's influence. God made you perfect just the way you are. You know, sometimes the world wants to tell us that, oh, you know, you have long hair, you have short hair, or you come from this side of town or from that side of town. I want to tell you, God made you perfect just the way you are. He loves you just the way you are you are. You know, now we're in a society where people want to tell us all kinds of alpha, I just call it alphabet soup, you know? And yeah, we have free will. We can declare anything we want to declare because God loves us so much. But that's not honoring God. God made you perfect the way you are. He loves you just the way you are. And it's only the devil that would say otherwise, right? We are perfectly knit together in our mother's womb. And it's so easy to forget that. You know, Patty and I deal with people in retail. Anybody that's in retail knows. There's all, you just, just you never know who's going to walk through the door. <laughs> She's laughing. <laughs> you just never know. And people are confused, upset, frustrated by the things that are going on in the world. But if, if we draw close to Jesus, we know we're going to be okay. And you know, we had a Bible study last night and, uh, in 2 Kings. And I don't want to go into the whole thing. But the Sumerians were, you know, on the brink of disaster, right? The worst case scenario that anyone could imagine. There was no food. People were dying. People were doing outrageous things. And in one day, God turned it around. In one day. So when you think that God has, you're departed from God, and it looks like there's nothing left for us, in one day, God can turn it around. In one day. You know, it was 2008. You guys all have heard this story, but for the ones that didn't, and the ones that didn't, I'm sorry. In 2008, I was drag racing, and I did a trip to Phoenix, and I came home from Phoenix, and I didn't feel well. I went to the hospital, and they diagnosed me with congestive heart failure, and I had to stop racing. And I took a couple months off, and I'd go to the doctors, I'd go to the hospital, and I'd get sicker and sicker and sicker and sicker. And uh, one day, I was watching... God TV. <laughs> and uh, I wasn't, and I'm just going to be honest with you. In 2008, 
I hadn't been baptized in the Holy Spirit or anything. I was not very Pentecostal. But I'm watching God TV, and I don't even remember who the speaker was. He says, someone's going to be healed of heart failure right now. And I got up out of my lazy boy recliner, and I ran up, and I grabbed that TV, and I claimed that healing. And in one day, God turned it around. In one day, yeah. Praise him. He dwells in our praises. I went to the cardi- cardiologist two weeks later. You don't have heart failure. A week after that, I was down in Atlanta, drag racing my motorcycle. <laughs> in one day, God turned it around. He will always turn it around. He, 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 he's always there. We, we, we just need not to give up. You know, you can get all this stuff on the news. You can go, don't give up. God will turn it around in one day. And there's so many testimonies as I look out here and I look at the faces of God has, has turned it around. You know, <laughs> all right, I went off on a little <laughs> thing. But, you know, so we're all different, right? We're all different. God planned it that way. We're not all supposed to look alike. You know, I mean, not everyone can be perfect, you know. What are you laughing at? Oh, good thing I don't get offended easily. No. But, but it's the truth. You know, look in the mirror. You are perfect. God made you that way. The only person that wants to deny that is the devil. He doesn't want, you know, he's a pretty miserable guy. And misery loves company. And there's nothing that makes him happier than to make you miserable. <laughs> So just remember that the next time you're not feeling so good and you're like, oh, woe is me. <laughs> you got to be careful who we partner with, right? Because it's all about partnering, right? So partner with Jesus. Partner with God. He thinks you're wonderfully and perfectly made. He really does. Amen. Verse 23 and 24. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Point out anything in me that offends you and lead me along the past of everlasting life. Point out anything in me that offends you. Who was David talking to? God. Perfect. David was talking to God. David asked God to point out anything in him that was offended him. He didn't ask me. He didn't ask you. And you know what? Nobody else asked you. <laughs> We're asking God. <laughs> okay? So, and, and that's why it takes four. It takes the Father, it takes the Son, and it takes the Holy Spirit. I mean, we always want to hear from the Holy Spirit because it's the Holy Spirit that's going to point out to us what offends. And then the Holy Spirit will guide us. And then we have the choice. We don't have to listen to the Holy Spirit, right? We have free will. I was going to do a little dumb, so I'm going to do it, okay? So let's just, for the sake of argument, say that David and Will just caught on fire, okay? And I got to get out of here. I got to get out of here fast, right? So I look to the right and I look to the left. And the Holy Spirit's saying, hmm, that door's a little further away. This one's closer. The Holy Spirit's saying, go to that door. But I'm thinking, survival instinct, right? I'm going to this door, right? So here I go. I'm going to the door. I'm going to the door. That door's locked. (laughs) Right? Right? But the Holy Spirit says, go this way. But this is further. This is further, God. This is further. Hey, I made it. Right? So I... I just needed a little exercise. But, you know, sometimes the easy path isn't the best path. Now, you know, our pastor was a football player. I was a football player. I was a defensive lineman and a defensive back. And our coach always said, take the path of least resistance. Right? So that's what, I mean, I've kind of, we kind of do that in life, right? Right? When something comes up that's a struggle, it'll be like, well, you know, the easy way out. But sometimes the easiest way isn't the best way, you know? That's why we need to listen 
and see what God has to say. And as pastor can attest, sometimes the offense will try to tick the, trick the defense by leaving a hole that looks like it's easier to get out. And you, you take the bait and you end up at the locked door. So, you know, that's one of the things we work on at, at uh, fire starters is hearing from the Holy Spirit. You know, so when David says these words, point out anything in me that offends you and lead me along the path of everlasting life. What is David doing? He's asking God for a relationship. And that's what this whole message is about. It's about our relationship with God. David's saying, hey, I get it. I've done some bad things. Let me, let me listen to you. Come closer, Lord. Come closer. Let me, let me be more of a bigger part of my life. You know, I mean, this is pretty transparent of David because he, he says, you know my anxious thoughts. And, you know, David was a great warrior and conqueror and king of Israel. Who knows what his thoughts were and what he had on his mind. But he's saying, God, let me have this relationship. You know, I wish everybody was here on Wednesday because there's some good stuff that happens here on Wednesdays. And so that's just my little uh, tribute. But, you know, PJ talked about our relationship with God. And what did he say? What, what did he say? We need to put down our agendas and our assumptions, right? We need to get rid of us, less of us, more of him. Because if we go into this relationship with a preconceived notion of how it's going to be, we're not really listening to the Holy Spirit, are we? You know, we need, we need to, to draw in, draw closer to God and listen to his Holy Spirit. But we've got to clear the slate, Delete the memes. Clear the browsing history, right? You know, clear out all the text messages. That way we're ready and truly ready to have a relationship with God. Because to go back to the message I preached last summer, we, we don't want to do it our way, right? We need to do it Yahweh. <laughs> Not our way, Yahweh. Did anybody have a notion this morning that when I preached, the two guys would be playing guitars behind me this morning? Isn't that cool? It's awesome. Yeah. And you know what? They didn't practice. This is just what the Holy Spirit led them. And you know, this isn't the way I would do it. But when, when they said, hey, we want to try this, I'm like, why not? Right? Right? Why not try to do it Yahweh? Might not be my way, but it's Yahweh. <laughs> and it's beautiful. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. <laughs> We're not done yet, though. <laughs> so I love when the Old Testament and the New Testament kind of like intertwine and work together. So now I want to go to Ephesians 3.17. It says, Then Christ will make his home in your hearts. As you trust in him. Everybody say trust in him. Right? As we trust in him. Your roots will go down into God's love and keep you strong. See, there's power in the name. Right? We sing this song. There's power in the name of Jesus. The closer, closer we are to Jesus, the more power we get. The, the more power we receive from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is powerful. The Holy, the Holy Spirit moves things. <coughs> We've seen the move of the Holy Spirit here. When the fire just falls and breaks out, I mean, I've seen it in my life. Um, so many times I've heard from the Holy Spirit, do this, don't do that. Do this. Do. I mean, all right, can I be brutally honest? Patty says no. <laughs> brutally. So, so yesterday, I'm in the store, and these two guys walk in. Okay, and um, 
I could have stereotyped them immediately. And that's pretty bad coming from a biker, right? Like, <laughs> of all, because I get stereotyped all the time, all right? But the, these guys were obviously of a faith that's different than ours. And the Holy Spirit says to me, love them. And so I walked up, and I loved them. And then we were talking about motorcycles and they were truck drivers, and so then we were talking about trucking because I have my CDL and all this stuff. And, you know, t- till the day was over, they bought a brand new motorcycle. <laughs> yeah. But if I hadn't listened to the Holy Spirit, right, I went, oh, what do these guys want? <laughs> right? Right? You know? So remember that the next time a Jehovah's Witness shows up at the door. <laughs> okay? Because, you know what? You could love on them. And, and turn things around. You might be the only Jesus they ever see. And these guys definitely weren't worshiping Jesus. But for a few minutes, I got to be the Jesus that, are, that, that they got to see. And, and you could just tell in their, their continents changed. They kind of walked in, you know, uh, a little uptight and not speaking English. And until it was over, it was hugs and love. And, you know, and that, that's the thing. Love is contagious. That's why Jesus is contagious. Because once, once you get it and once you feel it, you just want more and more and more. So now we get to the question. And may you have the power to understand, all, as all God's people should, how wide, how deep, how high, How deep is his love? You know, God's love addresses the deepest need of our human hearts, doesn't it? I mean, because it's infinite. We can never, ever get enough, right? You know, have you ever been full of someone? Okay, I'm full. (laughs) That's a derogatory term, right? I'm full. Thanks for the visit. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) But... (laughs) Has anybody ever here, like, just been full of the Holy Spirit? Like, okay, that's enough, God. I'm good. I'm good. I, I don't know anybody that has. Yeah, right. It's never enough, right? We want more. And we pray that. More, Lord. More, Lord. More, Lord. More, Lord. And that's a great prayer. Um, and it's simple. You know, and when you start to hear the Holy Spirit, just ask for more. Open your heart to receive more, Lord. More, Lord. Same thing with healing. You know, if you feel that heat, if you're asking God to heal you, more, Lord, more, Lord. Give me more, Lord. See, our faith in Jesus, it's about a relationship. It's not about a religion. It's not about what Pastor Jerry says. It's not about the worship songs. It's not about what Pastor Rich says or Rachel or Denny Kramer. Don't, don't shoot me. All right? It's not. You know how, how, why Denny Kramer is so powerful? Because he has a relationship with God. It has nothing to do with Denny Kramer. You know what? We could all prophesy like Denny if we opened our mind and wanted to do it. And that's what we talk about at fire starters. You know, in this word, Paul is praying for us for inward power. That's what this is about. It's about inward power, about inward presence and inward perception. It's about what we feel. It's not about what we see. We can't see the Holy Spirit, but we can feel him. And we can see the tangible results of what he has done. And that's the prayer for today, is that we would see and hear from God. And we can run away like King David did. And we don't know how deep or how wide it was. But today, Jay Evans is going to play the part of King David. And he's going to come up here and we're going to measure how far King David can get, how far he can get away from God. Wow. There he goes. (laughs) That's pretty far. He's still going. He's still going. Look at it. Chet's opening the door. King David has left 
the building. Uh Uh-huh. But you know what? The part of God is played by Pastor Rich today. God is here. He's got He's got David. And what's he doing? He's reeling them in. He's reeling them in. He might have got he might have got 30, 40 feet away, right? Or how deep? How wide? How far? Yeah. And look, and guess what? David ran away, and when he came back, God gave him a hug. She so did. Thank you, Jay. <laughs> and so that's the point. You can run. You can hide. You know what? We're all going to make bad choices. But at the end of the day, God's ready. He wants you back. He loves you so much. He wants you back. Yeah. Give me the next one, Marisol. Yeah. I don't know. I get goosebumps when I look at that. That's how far God loves you. That's how far he loves you. You know, you you, you just can't imagine it. But you know what God told me this morning when I was sitting here listening to worship? You know what's cool about this picture? If you started on the North Pole and you started running away from God, or if you were on the equator and you started running away from God, guess what? At some point, you're running back. (laughs) You can only run so far. (laughs) You can only run so far. Because at some point, you're running back. And that's what God wants for you. He wants you to come back. He wants to be with you always. So 319 says, May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. Right? We can't understand that. Right? It's imaginable. Like, how much God loves us. How far, how outreaching it is. But he loves us anyway. He loves us. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness and love and power that comes from God. That inward provision that comes from God. God thinks you're awesome. Can you guys come up? The rest of the worship team. God thinks you're awesome. He loves you more than you can imagine. And he loves you on those dark days. Days that you think you're unlovable. Guess what? God loves you anyway. In fact, we should never think that we're unlovable. Who wants us to think we're unlovable? Here we go, the enemy. And so when we're doing, you're partnering with the enemy. It, I, I don't get why we, we just love to partner with the, with, the, with the enemy. But today's the day, okay, to stop it, all right? I mean, that, that could also be the point here. Stop it, okay? <laughs> okay? It's going to be Okay. God will change it. It could be tomorrow. It might be two days. God will turn it around in just one day. We just got to hang in there. You got to seek him. You know, if things aren't going good, maybe it's time to, like, take a break. Remember when Moses got to the Red Sea? Right? We're leaving Israel. Here we go. Uh Uh-oh. What did he do? He stopped. And he waited. And he sought the Lord. He stopped. And the sea opened, and they walked through. Sometimes we just got to stop. It's hard right now, right? It's hard because there's just so much going on. Clear your news feed. Make new friends. You know what? (laughs) The other day, I was on social media. It was the other night, and I started seeing all this stuff. And, you know, I just started cleaning up my news feed. Like, why am I friends with this person? You know, like, I'm sorry if I, if I deleted you. <laughs> you know what? But you know what? <laughs> Jesus loves me <laughs> more than you do. <laughs> so I'm good with it, you know. So we're going to, if everybody could stand. Did we get this at all? All right. You know, the music kind of set this, this tone, right? And, but you know, 
That's where the Holy Spirit wants to dwell. It's not in the excitement. It's not in the noise. It's in the love and the peace. So today was a peaceful message, right? And it's about love and how much Jesus loves you and wants to be a part. So we're going to end with Waymaker, the miracle worker, the light in the darkness, right? So as we sing this, listen to the words and worship Him. You know, we, revival comes when we have a heart of worship, a heart to open our eyes. Now, if you've got some stuff that you need to download, if you've been carrying your agenda around for a while, the altar's open. Take it to the cross. Lay your burdens at the feet of Jesus because Jesus wants to take those burdens from you. He carries the... Uh, government on his shoulders as pastor jerry said right he jesus is ready to take anything you got he'll carry it on his shoulders darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are a way maker, miracle worker, promise keep light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here, touching every heart. I worship you, I worship you, you are here, healing every heart, I worship you, I worship you, you are here, turning lives around.